Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to talk about a very interesting algorithm that I came across uh, in college, and I had a little bit of a trouble wrapping my head around it, but recently I came across it again and thought, yo, you know, why not? Uh, you know, it would make an interesting topic to cover. So we are talking about the Euclidean algorithm, uh, which mathematically computes the greatest common divisor or the greatest common factor or the GCD of two numbers. The GCD is basically the largest number that perfectly divides uh, two numbers without leaving a remainder. Cool. The algorithm basically states that the greatest common divisor between the two numbers, the Euclidean algorithm, of course, does not change if the larger number is replaced by its difference with the smaller number. Let me, yeah, let me say that again. The algorithm basically states that the greatest common divisor between the two numbers does not change if the larger number is replaced by its difference with the smaller number. Now, if you want to go out and prove this, uh, this is not the channel for that. You can check out the Wikipedia page and stuff, stuff like that. But yeah, that's what the algorithm basically states. Okay, so let's take an example. If we take the numbers 49 and 21, so let me write 49 and 21. Uh, the GCD of these two numbers comes out to be 7. So the GCD, if I write like this, GCD is 7. Cool? Okay. This makes sense because uh, 7 times 7 is 49 and uh, 3 times 7 is 21. Now, if I subtract 21 from 49, let's do that, uh, I basically get a value of 28. So I get 28 over here. Now, uh, 28 can also be expressed as 4 times 7, obviously, which basically gives us a GCD again of 7. Now, if I go a little bit further, right, so clearly the GCD between 21 and 28 is 7. Um, now, if you go a little bit further, if I subtract 28 from 21, I get a value of 7 over here. Then again, I, if I do the same thing, if I get 7 and 21, if I subtract this, I get a 14 over here then I get a 7 over here again. So what are we doing? We're repeatedly subtracting the larger number with the smaller number and then replacing the larger number with the difference that we got. That's what we're doing. And every time you do it, your GCD remains the same. And that is, so this is basically proof that the algorithm actually works. Cool. Um, now, let's take a look at the code for that. It's very simple. So I've written an example function called over here. This is print Euclidean GCD. Mind you, this is a recursive function, so um, we're going to call this a multiple amount of times, obviously. So in this, I'm passing the same value, 49 and 21. So this is the function. Let me go to the function call. Uh, def Euclidean GCD. Now, this is a recursive function. Um, for simplicity, the numbers in this case are A and B, obviously. Uh, we can call them whatever you want. You can call them, you know, num1, num2, whatever, I mean, whatever you feel comfortable with, but this is it. This is the function call and these are the parameters, the numbers A and B. So uh, here, what we're doing is we are taking uh, the absolutes of A and B and I'm giving those values back to the original A and B. Uh, this is because we don't want to deal with non-negative numbers. Zeros are fine, uh, but non-negative numbers are not appreciated. Uh, the next is basically, there are three conditions. Let me just open this up. The three conditions are basically if a equal to zero and b equal to zero, if a equal to zero and b not equal to zero, if a not equal to zero and b equal to zero. What happens in those cases? So what we basically do is um, the three conditions below are recursive base conditions. So they're base conditions. You know, whenever you have a recursive function, you need a base condition to end the loop, end the recursive function call, end the stack. When um, so. When A and B are both zero, it basically means that the two numbers don't really have a GCD, which might happen in some cases. Um, and, and so what you do basically is you return none uh, because you didn't find a GCD, so you return none because there is no GCD. And in this case, if you had a different pro programming language, you would use something like null or you know something else, I don't know, zero or minus one. When A is zero, it means that the GCD is stored in B simple as that if a is zero it means that you got your gcd and um, it, and also obviously if b is not zero then we return b vice versa when b is zero when b is zero the gcd is stored in a it's pretty straightforward very easy to understand now the actual algorithm over here 
the algorithm is applied from always remember from the larger number to the smaller number always subtract the smaller number from the larger number and then you know in the algorithm store it you know at the position of the larger number so to check which number is larger we use this little condition if a is greater than b cool cool um so i know we said subtraction i like we know like i know that in the in the initial theory we talked about subtraction but repeated subtraction without you know putting in extra conditions can cause computational issues like i don't know subtracting by non-negative numbers stuff like that so i don't want to or regularly people don't want to deal with subtraction in that manner so we use a very easy technique we use the modulus operator now if you don't know what the modulus operator is it basically gives you the remainder so you know the there's the three things in the division process there's a dividend there's a quotient and the divisor the dividend is basically the number that you want to divide the divisor is the number that you want to divide with the quotient is the number of times the divisions happen the, the subtraction happens from the dividend and the remainder is the value that remains at the end that nobody wants to deal with that's the remainder right so the module op the modulus operator directly gives you the remainder which is why you don't have to subtract continuously uh, manually you can just use the modulus operator and get the remainder and that's what you want in this case because subtraction repeated subtraction basically gives you the remainder I don't want to run this multiple times you can just do a repeated subtraction uh, by the help of the modulus operator and that's it the, mod the modulus operator gets the remainder of the first number divided with the second number which essentially means uh, subtracting the second number from the first number until you cannot subtract further hence your remainder so once you get the remainder you just pass it into the function again in in the place of the larger number so here a was the larger number so in place of the larger number you just pass a modulus b and then comma b done else obviously if uh, a is not greater than b or a could be equal to or something like that then what you basically do is if the second number is bigger or equal to the first uh, you just call this function over here again this is a recursive function you call it again the same process over and over again until your base conditions are met um, yeah I think I didn't put this over here. yeah look at this so until the base conditions are met so yeah that's just how this algorithm works uh, that was the code and um, the code will always be in the description as always and um, thanks for watching guys um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I also have like heavily commented this code because it was a little confusing at first um, so um, like share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one